Hi, my name is Eric Lauren, and I'm a sophomore at the University of Rochester studying chemical engineering. Along with Ann He, Tiffany Wong, and Koji Muto, we are students in Computer Science 160, taught by Professor Ted Pollock. We have created a program in the MATLAB environment to calculate the Reynolds number, one of the most important and useful numbers to a chemical engineer. The Reynolds number can be used to determine whether a fluid flow is laminar, transient, or turbulent over a flat plate or through a cylindrical pipe. Uh, using a GUI interface, or a graphic user interface, we turned an otherwise complicated computer code into a user-friendly program that anyone can use to calculate the Reynolds number. Our GUI program queries the user for input variables, mainly the velocity of the fluid, the diameter of the pipe, or length of the flat plate, depending on the flow environment, and then one of two options, either the density and dynamic viscosity of the fluid, or just the kinematic viscosity. This is because the equation to calculate the Reynolds number is the density times velocity times the diameter or length of the fluid flow, all over the viscosity. However, there exists a relationship that the kinematic viscosity equals the dynamic viscosity divided by density. So this can be substituted into the equation and give the velocity times the diameter or length all over the kinematic viscosity, which is a somewhat simplified equation for the Reynolds number that chemical engineers sometimes use. Here is the computer code for our program. It looks pretty complicated. And you can see the bulk of our program takes place here once the user clicks calculate. Where we def and here we define our variables and run the math to calculate the Reynolds number. So it can look pretty complicated, so I'll explain the logic of it using this flowchart. First, the user inputs a velocity and diameter. And if they haven't, the program, when they click calculate, isn't going to run, obviously. So if they have put in the velocity and diameter, they will, the program will then go to option one, which is the regular Reynolds number equation. Um, if they have put all the variables in, it will, the program will then run. But if, say, they haven't and they've chosen to use the kinematic viscosity, the program will go to option two. If it has run, if they have put the variable in, it will then run. If they haven't, put either of the two options in, the program will display an error message saying that they need to put in more information. So the user's put in one of the options, um, the user has chosen the flow environment, then the program will then calculate the Reynolds number uh, according to the flow environment over a plate or through a cylindrical pipe. And you can see here the certain critical numbers for the Reynolds number which determine if the flow is laminar, transient, or turbulent. So that's the quick math behind it. Um, our code takes into consideration if the user hasn't entered enough variables or has entered both options. And it's also important to note that our program has asked for all metric units, but it's possible to use other units as long as they all cancel out in the Reynolds number equation because the Reynolds number is a dimensionless number. Now we'll do an example with air flowing through an air duct. Here we'll take the velocity of the air to be 0.67 meters per second with the diameter of the air duct being 22.3 meters, pretty big. The kinematic viscosity of air, uh, we looked this up in the textbook, is 0 0.000159 meters squared per second. So now if we click the calculate button, you'll see that the Reynolds number is extremely large um, and that this would indicate turbulent flow. So here our program displays um, information about the flow. So this concludes our video about our Reynolds number program. We want to thank you for watching, and we hope this video demonstrated the one of the many uses of MATLAB to solve a real chemical engineering problem.